Meet John and Sarah, both voted most likely to succeed in 1995 as their yearbook will testify. These two budding young entrepreneurs have just packed in their boring old nine to five day jobs to start up their own small business. They're young, smart, tech savvy, annoyingly good looking, and know exactly what it's gonna to take to succeed. John and Sarah have done the research and the home office looks amazing. Even if John's pool table is now on eBay but nobody wants to come along and collect it. They're all ticked off and they're an official company and the website looks amazing. Even if John didn't really like the predominantly green hue but then that's not his area of expertise, it's Sarah's and besides they both agree that any day now the PayPal account should be brimming with cash and Sarah can get back to the gym and the personal trainer she's had her eye on for a while. When Sarah opens the door to the warehouse, read two car garage, she turns to John and asks, not unreasonably, Where's the f***ing stock? Because that's John's area of expertise and pretty much all he's had to organise in this soon to be one person venture. And it's right about now that the ballad of John and Sarah gets interesting because the very unique and much sought after stock which these two are going to import into Australia is completely and utterly missing in action. Somewhere in China, we think. You see, John and Sarah do make for a very good team, but like a lot of business operators, they never really got their head around just what it takes to import their stock from another country and have it land on their doorstep. They thought they'd done the research. They attended all the seminars, but now they're starting to realise that as soon as there's a slight bump in the road, and there can be a lot of bumps, they're really all on their own. So Sarah turns to John and asks a series of not unreasonable questions such as Was the material suitable for import? Were the goods legally allowed into Australia? Were they being fumigated? What type of wood was used in the manufacture? Were the products manufactured to a minimum safe Australian standard? Did he actually ever meet the supplier? Why did he pay for the goods in full when he didn't need to until they'd arrived? Which company was doing the shipping? And don't give me any FOB USOB because we're out 30 grand and this whole arrangement was supposed to be X-Works and now it's likely our CNF will double the cost and that's if we can even find where our goods are. And all John can do is wonder why Sarah doesn't look as good right now as she did in her yearbook photo. So it's here, with John removing an original bill of lading from a sensitive part of his anatomy, we come to realise that in a perfect world, John and Sarah would be on their way to their first million. But the cold hard truth is that if you're thinking of importing, then you really do need to cover your bases. That's why it's important to know that there's a team called Stockwells out there. A professional import-export company who do this as their sole business. Since 1971, they've had the backs of hundreds of importers, small and large. And when the going gets tough, it's good to know that a company like Stockwells is in your corner. You can call Stockwells at any time and get the facts about what it takes to import your goods into Australia. Or you can be like John, who now sleeps on top of his pool table in a two-car garage, while Sarah sleeps in the home office on top of her personal trainer.